Hi, this is Barry here, and you're very welcome to today's podcast episode from rightcom.com. And today I thought I'd take a little detour from the usual um, you know, podcast about writing and promotion and marketing and all those different things, and I would actually speak about the the Rocky movie. Now you've probably seen the recent incarnation of it, which was Creed, but back when I was younger, a lot younger, the Rocky movie was it came out and it was a huge success. And it's one of those movies like Back to the Future, E.T., or, you know, all those kind of movies where, you know, you're walking past the door, the movie's on and you pause and you stop and you're, you're watching a bit. You know, maybe you're doing something else. And then before you know it, you're sitting down and you're watching, you watch the whole thing through. And it doesn't matter how many times you've watched it, it's still... You know, it still catches you get engrossed in the storyline and you know how it's going to end. You know the fight that's coming up and all the terrain and everything is going to go through. And for me, that movie was very inspirational. I watched it loads of times with my father while he was still alive and um, I have some happy memories with it. But the thing is, I wasn't a big boxing fan. I didn't really know much about boxing, but whatever it was about that movie, you know, it, it grabs you and you can't help but watch it. But when I found out later on that the inspirational story that was actually behind it, I found that, you know, it would actually probably make a better movie if somebody had gone, would go and actually do it because so much happened on the run up to that movie. You know, if you go way, way back in time to when Sylvester Stallone was born, I don't know what went wrong with his birth or whatever, but he had to be taken out with forceps. And whatever way the forceps had taken a hold of him, it had caused nerve damage or something in his face. So, you know, from then he was speaking out the side of his mouth and his face was a little bit, little bit kind of lazy and his speech was slurred and stuff like that. And that had all come about from how he was brought into the world. But, you know, like most kids, he was big into TV and big into movies. But he had this idea that he wanted to be a movie star. Not only just a movie star, he wanted to have the star and role. He wanted to be a Hollywood leading man. You know, but when you look at how he, his appearance and everything, he didn't really have the best start. He didn't, you know, speak properly and, you know, his speech was slurred and his appearance and stuff like that probably wasn't what was, you know, it didn't put him on a good stand. But he didn't want to give up. He wanted to be a Hollywood leading man and he was had this goal and, you know, like Rocky, doing the sit-ups or whatever it is he you know grit his teeth and he was going to keep going until he got there you know I, i've heard that it came to a stage where he had like 1500 meetings with cast and um agents because he wanted to get into movie and he knew that he'd have to find you know any wee small bit to get his toe in the door and he was going to do whatever it took and you know he went to he had something like 1500 meetings and at this stage like there wasn't actually that many agents in LA so sometimes he would have to go back to the same casting agent maybe four or five times even though he'd been refused before he just doggedly kept coming back and coming back and it came to a stage one time I think he he fell asleep or something in one of the waiting rooms or something like that or he was hanging around late at night and I think the casting agent was walking by and he said are you still here or something like that or what do you want and he said he wanted to part so eventually I think that the cast nation just got frustrated when he said okay i'll get your part you're gonna be in such and such a movie now i think the first movie he actually got into was one that woody allen i think was in i think was one of the first woody allen movies that was was made and i think uh, sylvester Stallone, i think he got a bit part he was kind of a again a gangster or a hoodlum or something who you know played this bit part in the background and you know after all that effort on getting that part, you know, anything that came up from after that was always those kind of bit parts. He was always going to be typecast as kind of the heavy or the hoodlum or, you know, something like that, which he didn't think he, he didn't want to be. He wanted to be a Hollywood. He wanted to be the leading man. He wanted to have the leading man role and he wasn't getting it. But he stuck to his guns, you know, even came to a stage where he was living in apartments with no heat. And I think at one stage, I think he was married by then and he had taken his wife's jewellery to sell them off because he needed more money for this. And that. I think his marriage broke down, that original one. But again, he doggedly kept going, you know, with no heating in the house. And at one stage, it was just him and his dog. He had no other company with him. But, you know, he he, he wouldn't give up. He didn't want to take on a proper job. He didn't want to do the nine to five job. He had this dream that he was going to be an actor and he was going to do whatever it took to get there. And I think it came to one stage when um, his lowest point was when he had to sell his dog. Which for me, being a dog owner, I think is heartbreaking that, you know, somebody who's followed you along and is your only company that it's come to the stage where, you know, when you need money for food, you have to sell your dog. And I think it's heartbreaking. But he sold his dog at the local liquor store for $25. So as you can imagine, then he was down at his lowest point. And I think a couple of days later or however long it was afterwards, he had gone to the local library and he had gone into the library, I think, to keep warm. It wasn't actually he wanted to read books, but somebody had left a, an Edgar Allan Poe book on the desk and he had seen it there and he was just reading through it. And I think from then he grew a big love of Edgar Allan Poe. I think he, he still is a big fan of him, 
but that gave him a love for writing and he he found he said to himself well i'm not going to be um a leading man the way the route i'm going down so i need to change my path i need to go a different way so he decided then what he was going to do was he was going to write a script and he got into script writing then he knew then this was going to be the vehicle that was going to get him his movie and you know the first movie script he sold he sold it for a hundred dollars so that's what he was doing he was kind of selling movie scripts but again he wasn't getting any further along than he wanted to be but then there was one night he was watching uh, a movie and it was um oh, sorry not a movie it was actually a boxing match and it was between chuck wepner and muhammad ali chuck wepner had been given a chance to step into the ring with muhammad ali and he was like he was the rocky story he was the unknown actor or not the off oh, sorry the unknown boxer you know who was kind of one of those boxers was always kind of fighting in kind of local you know uh boxing um places but he was never really somebody who had given you know he had the talent but he never had he never had the shot of the channel at the, the title and for whatever happened um he ended up that through some kind of weird um i don't know coincidence or something like that he was given a chance to fight um muhammad ali in the ring so sylvester Stallone was watching that that fight that night and he was totally blown away with it and he was inspired with the story i think that had gone with it so that night he sat down and he started typing out the rocky script and I think he'd wrote for 20 hours non-stop because he was so excited and he wanted to get it out. And he knew that this was going to be the vehicle for him. He knew that he was going to be Rocky because he had gone through all what Rocky had gone through. All the, you know, he put his heart, soul into it. And there was nobody else who was going to play a Rocky but him. So when it came to selling his script, you know, he, again, like the cast and agency went around all the different places trying to sell his script. And everybody said, no, it was no good. It was predictable and it was weak and it was this and it was that. But again, like not giving up he kept going and going and going and eventually came to a stage where somebody had offered him a hundred thousand dollars to take the script off them off him and you know when you had no money he had no heat and stuff like that you know if it was you or i we would probably say yes yeah, straight away we'd grab the hundred thousand and you know get ourselves set up and then we'd you know we'd put our dream on the back burner for a little while and come back to it then later on but he refused he said no if anybody was going to play rocky he was going to play rocky so it came to a stage, I think he was offered up to something like a quarter of a million for the Rocky script because they had, um, there was a big actor at the time, Ryan O'Neill, and somebody had earmarked him for the Rocky movie. They said he was going to be the part, but Sylvester Stallone said, no, um, either I'm in the movie or you're not making the movie at all, and you totally refused. So it came to a stage then where they had said, right, if you're going to be in the movie, this was weeks later, if you're going to be in the movie, we are, we're we not going to give you a quarter of a million because you're a big risk. Nobody knows you. The movie could be a flop and we're not going to pay out big on a movie with an unknown actor in the leading role. So if we're going to do it and you you really want to do it, you're only going to give you $30,000. So that was what he settled for. He settled for the $30,000 as long as he had the star on role. And the first thing he did, which, you know, probably, again, me or you would have done, is probably go buy food, get some heat on or do something like that. But no, he went straight to the local liquor store and he, he waited there for the next two or three days until the owner turned up with his dog and he said he wanted to buy him back off. And so, of course, he offered the $25 that he had been given for the dog. But I don't know how it came about. Maybe the... The man found out that he had come into money, whatever, but he refused. And he said, no, if you want the dog, you're going to have to pay a lot more than that. So again, he wasn't going to give up. You know, at first he refused to sell on the dog, but he kept going and going and haggling and haggling and haggling. And it came to a stage then that he actually paid $15,000 for the dog. This was the price tag that he settled for. He was said that if you don't pay that money, you're not getting the dog. And not only are you going to pay me that money, but you're going to get me a part in your movie. So like when you look at it, like he $30,000 and... 15,000 of it went straight to the man that you know that he who, who'd taken his dog off him which you know it says a lot so much about that man like how could he do that to to him like you know if, good enough he'd give him the 25 dollars when he needed but to, to to screw him like that to for to, to make him pay fifteen thousand dollars to get the dog back you know it says a lot about Sylvester alone that he would go that far to, to give half of his earnings for the movie way to get his dog back but it also says a lot about the man on the other side but anyway you know the part everything else is history from that you know the dog actually played a part in the movie itself when it came to you know came to the movie being made but you know that movie you know i think it made it cost like something like a million dollars to make and yet went on to make something like a hundred million dollars and all the the movies that came after all the rocky two three four five and creed and everything else came back you know from him sticking by his guns refusing not to give up that script you know to doggedly think that you know he was going to be a leading man and of course you know he got there we've seen all the movies he made from that 
you know you can argue and say well you not all of them are great or this and that but you know his dream was to be a hollywood leading man and he got there he you know he got his position on the hollywood hill like he is famous for doggedly sticking by and it got me thinking like not only is it inspirational that somebody would go that far to follow their dream so much like how many authors like have ever followed their dream so much like that how many authors have given up after the first book was turned down and you know how many authors would you go around to maybe a hundred publishers and you know keep going and keep going and you know maybe not even believing in their ability and writing and to you know to doggedly go back day after day and write and write and write you know even though nobody believes in them even though everybody says you know everybody's laughing them saying you're never going to be a writer your writing sucks it's this it's poor it's weak you know but if you know if you had uh, you know if, if you kept going as long as he had like you know i could even say it in my own case like if i kept going and followed some of the things that i had you know given up in the past you know when I, I had come to a challenge and i'd given up and if i had to stuck you know as doggedly as he had with the rocky movie like i'd probably be in a far different position for me maybe it could be the same for you too so i hope this podcast episode inspired you because you know you don't know how given up how what you're going to lose out and by you're not sticking in the game longer than you do you know you know not listen to other people and believing in yourself and you know having this goal of yourself that you're going to be this you know this famous fiction writer or you're gonna your know, book is gonna be made into a movie or whatever it is the dream you have or maybe you want to have like a you know a, a blog that's going to be making you maybe thirty thousand dollars a month or whatever it is you know that may seem so far away down the time but if you doggedly keep going day after day and keep not giving up you don't know where you're gonna go to you might actually go be far beyond that you know he probably thought well you know maybe he only his dream at that stage was only just making the first movie he didn't see all the other movies down the line and how his career would take off after that so you don't know where your life is going to go and for me that you know the the movie which i think it should be made as a movie outside the rocky film is far more inspirational and it's something that probably more people should you know follow along in his footsteps to to keep going when it seems like there's no you know there's no success ahead for you so i hope you enjoyed this podcast episode as always you know if you enjoyed this podcast episode you know i'd really appreciate if you share it one more person or maybe you would just tweet about it on social media just let people know that there is a right come podcast i would really really appreciate it and again too if you'd like to come over to the right come site if you could come over to w-r-i-t-e-c-o-m-e.com i've got a great free report there at the moment and i'm going to show you how to grow your audience how to sell more books and how to get more book reviews and you can get a totally uh, free copy by dropping by so as always, thanks for sharing your time with me again today and take care and have a great day. Bye-bye.